Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary with another Fan TV, man. Back at you with another video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the videos, man. Let's get to today's topic. We're going to talk about uh, some Ravens predictions as far as offensively, uh, yards, stats, leaders, things like that, all right? But first, I want to say shout out to Deion Sanders and, you know, the Colorado Buffs football team, man. I watched that game yesterday. Uh, I was I was rooting and cheering like I watched some of my, my, my little cousins play football, bro. Like, I feel like a real connection with this team. Uh, a lot of people doubted what they could do going up against TCU, number 17 ranked team in the nation. Uh, people will say TCU lost players and things like that. Yes, they did, of course, but they were still ranked a top 20 team in the nation. First, Colorado, who were a 21 point underdog. And Colorado went in there and took the dub 45 42. Shador Sanders looked amazing. Travis Hunter, Jimmy Horn. Uh, guys played amazing out there. Um, special shout out to Shador Sanders, man, because they said that he was only here because of his dad. Oh, he was just a swag player, just an HBCU player. No, he's a power five, big time football player. He keeps playing as well. He's going to go in the first round. I think he will keep playing like that. Not 500 yards a game, but uh, still a very, very good season. I expect to see from Shador Sanders, man. So uh, shout out to Colorado. I'm definitely going to be tuned into them every Saturday that I can that I can watch. Um, I love seeing what they did, man, for real. So, shout out to Colorado, bro. All right, now, we're going to do some predictions, right? So, we're going to do – I can't do every single player on the Raiders. That's that's, that's too much. That's too long of a video. But we're going to do the quarterback, running back, and maybe, like, two pass catchers, right? So, that's how we're going to rock out with it. So, uh, running back – let's start running back. We're going to go with J.K. Dobbins, obviously, here. Um, I think J.K. Dobbins is going to be the lead horse in the backfield. Um, all that stuff about holding out, all that stuff's in the past. Now it's just about playing football, right? So I think J.K. Dobbins is going to lead the backfield and get at least, I don't know, 60% of the snaps, right, uh, opposed to a Gus Edwards, right, at least 60% of the snaps, right. Um, that's what I see J.K. Dobbins doing. I don't think it's going to be a 50-50 or anything like that. Um, I think Tom Munkin appreciates a back with pure ca uh, pass catching abilities, and J.K. Dobbins has said in the past that's what he's wanted to be. Before he had the big knee injury, uh, he was aspiring to be a Christian McCaffrey, uh, uh, Alvin Kamar. He was aspiring to be those kind of running backs. Will he get to that kind of level of they kind of doing? I'm not saying all that because those guys are special at catching the football in the backfield. But, so let's talk about J.K. Dobbins, right? So last year, he averaged 58 yards a game while clearly recovering from an injury, right? So this year, we're talking about healthy. Todd Munkin is still going to run the ball. Todd Munkin uses what he has. When he was in Tampa Bay, he had receivers. So they threw the ball over the field, right? When he was in Cleveland, he had Nick Chubb, still had OBJ and Jarvis. So OBJ and Jarvis got 8,000 yards. Nick Chubb still had a great season with Tom Munkin uh, as offensive coordinator. So the Ravens aren't just going to abandon the run game. They're still going to be a team that runs the football. It's going to be a very balanced offense, in my opinion. And Tom Munkin is going to use J.K. Dobbins because of that versatility, right? So if he averaged 58 yards a game last year while we're covering, I'm saying J.K. Dobbins can get around 68 yards a game this season, right? And listen, I'm going off 17 game projections. I'm not going to say, oh, he's going to get hurt. Guys are going to get hurt. If I'm going to do that, I'm not going to do the video. I can't. I don't go in predicting injuries. You know what I mean? We never know what's going to happen. All right? So, anyway. So, 16 yards a game. That's about 1150, 1200 yards for the season rushing. Right? Then you throw in receiving yards. I think he can get around 400 yards receiving. And through a 17 game season, that's about 20 to 25 yards a game receiving. So, more close to 25 yards a game receiving. I looked up Georgia's offense last year, right? Kenny McIntosh just got drafted by the Seahawks this year, rookie. Last year, he had 500 yards receiving in 15 games for the Georgia Bulldogs, right? So that's more yards than I'm saying J.K. Dobbins is going to have in two less games. So like I said, this is only 20, 25 yards a game. And we're talking about screen passes, little dump-offs to the flat. I think Lamar Jackson is going to get better this year at taking his checkdowns, right? I think he, we've already heard that through training camp that he's hitting the running backs more, all right? And the Quarterback group as a whole is hitting the running backs more. The running backs catching the ball has been a predominant feature of training camp. So I expect to carry that over into the regular season, right? So we're talking about maybe three catches, 20, 25 yards a game, 400 yards. That will put him in like the top 10 of running backs as far as receiving yards, right? 400, 430 yards would have been about seventh last year in the NFL. I looked it up. Guys like McCaffrey and Eckler were at the top. I mean, McCaffrey had like 85 catches last year for like 700 some yards. I not expecting that for J.K. Dobbins at all, but he got he can do this and be a top ten receiving option at the, at the running back position. I think that's I think that's highly possible. And we're talking about between 14, 1500 yards. That's the kind of yards from scrimmage in, in total. That's the kind of season that gets you paid, right? And that's the kind of season I think J.K. Dobbins is looking to have and can have on this team, right? 
All right, so SJK Dollars, right? Pass catchers now. We got all the new pass catchers here. OBJ, Zay, you got uh, Avalor here. All of these guys. But the player I'm so protected to, to lead the team, excuse me, he catches and receives me off, I'm going to go with Mark Andrews, man. Listen, throughout training camp, all the receivers were making plays. There's no right way around that. But the old reliable, the trusty target, the guy that was there right next to, you know, all the receivers, Mark Andrews, bro. Mark Andrews. And I don't want to hear anything about the days he was getting frustrated throwing or something. Mark Andrews is an intense competitor, right? It had nothing to do with those guys getting the ball. He's intense. That's that's just how he is when it comes to playing football, right? So his best season, he had like 1,300 yards, right? Now, I don't think he reached that height, but I think he can reach like 1,100 yards this year receiving maybe on like 90 catches and eight touchdowns, right? His, his team, sorry, his career high in touchdowns, I believe, is like 10, right? So we're talking about eight touchdowns, 90 catches, 1,100 yards. That's another pro bowl, all pro year for Mark Andrews. Um, we got to also think about, come on, we're talking about Todd Munkin again. We're talking about Lamar Jackson. Todd Munkin is coming from Georgia. They had Brock Bowers. They had Donald Washington. Brock Bowers is that's a very, very dynamic tight end. He was their leading receiver, right? So Todd Munkin comes from an offense where a tight end, can be his leading receiver. He he's done this before, right? Um, and Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson wants to throw the throw the ball to the receivers, to get his guys in space. But Mark Andrews across the middle has always been a safety blanket. It's always been the guy that he knew that he can count on and rely on to be in the exact spot when he needs him to be there. And I don't expect that to change, right? Um, so I'm expecting Mark Andrews like 90 catches. We're talking about 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns, right? Really good year for Mark Andrews, right? Um, uh, so listen, I know we're thinking we're going to have all these receivers with 1,000 yards, this and that. Listen, last year there was only four teams that had two players with 1,000 yards, uh, with, with two players with 1,000 yards, right? I'm going to tell you those teams real quick. So that's the Dolphins. They had Jalen Waddle. They had Tyreek Hill. That was the Eagles with A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith. That was the Seahawks with uh, Tyler Lockett and D.K. Metcalf. And the Bengals with Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, right? So... That it's not like this is something that's just common around the league where you got two guys with a thousand plus yards, right? That it's just not that common. So I think the Ravens can jump into that mix. So for me, who was the second guy going to be? Is it going to be Bateman? Is it going to be OBJ? Is it going to be hey, does they have a crazy rookie year? Um for me, I'm I'm gonna go with Rashad Bateman, right? I am. I think Rashad Bateman is going to be the guy that's going to be the other guy on the Ravens with 1,000 yards, right? Something around 80 catches this year. Same way around Mark with 1,100 yards. Touchdowns, I don't know. We'll, we'll say about seven, six touchdowns, six, seven touchdowns this year for Rashad Bateman. And the reason I pick him to be the other 1,000-yard receiver is just because um, I think that Lamar Jackson looks his way. I think he's the guy that separates clean when we're talking about um, out there one-on-one, man-to-man, or, you know, versus coverage, right? Uh, Zay, I think the Ravens are going to use Zay Flowers a whole lot, but he is a rookie. So putting the expectations of a thousand yards on a rookie is something that could be unrealistic, right? So I don't want to do that. And OBJ, he's an older player. I don't know how. Now I don't think the Ravens, I don't think the Ravens are going to put him on any kind of pitch count, things like that. But his snap count might not be as high as you know as a Bateman, right? Well, now the only thing that's going to put a, a, a wrench in this is how much does Rashad Bateman play Week One? Do the Ravens put them out there full go, or they, do they still take it slow with him, right? I think he's been ramping up, playing 11s, playing 7-on-7, seven seven, so he's getting close. He's getting close. So I think Sean Bateman can be the guy that have the other 1,000 yards for the Ravens this year as far as uh, terms of pass catchers on the team, right? All right. Last but not least, right, MVP season, Lamar Jackson, right? Can he have a kind of year where he has the MVP type of season, right? So when we go back to 2021, when it was the year with all the injuries, injury riddle team, right? Lamar Jackson threw for 28, sorry, 2,882 yards um, in 12 games. That's about 240 yards a game, right? This is when they had that they was forced to open up the offense because all the running backs were hurt, everybody was hurt, and they let Lamar Jackson cook, and he did really well, right? Now, he did that in 12 games. On a, he was on pace to pass for, if he played all 17 games, he was on pace to pass for 4,082 yards, right? So now this season, we're talking about a more spread out offense, um, offense with more weapons, right? A more dynamic play caller. I think Lamar Jackson does have his first career 4,000-yard season throwing the football. I got him down for about 4,200 yards passing. Um, we're going to do 34 touchdowns passing, 10 interceptions, all right? Now, the 10 interceptions, that will be his second highest in his career. He threw 13 in 2021. 
I want to say 10 because, look, when you're throwing the ball more, it's more chance for the ball to get picked off, right? Um, and his MVP year, he had 36 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. Uh, could he be that efficient again? Sure, he could be. You know what I mean? He's not a, a high turnover guy, but sometimes interceptions just go up and down. It doesn't really have to do with um, how turnover prone your quarterback is. Sometimes they just go up and down like that. Uh, but let's 34 touchdowns. That'll put him about fourth in the NFL. We're talking about from last year. Mahomes last year had 41. Burrow and Allen had 35 apiece. So we're talking about Lamar Jackson being top five of touchdown passes. If I, if I say 34, 35 touchdown passes, that's that's what I'm thinking, right? And then I don't think he rushes for a thousand yards this year. I think he rushes smarter. I think it's more scrambles. I don't think it's as much as design run. But I still think he gets 700 yards rushing. Still gets 700 yards rushing. Um, still gets about five TDs on the ground. So we're talking about 35, so we're talking about 39, 40 touchdowns this year um, versus only 10 interceptions, and we're talking about close to 5,000 yards of total offense for Lamar Jackson, right? That's the kind of season I think he can have, and that's the kind of season that if the Ravens are winning games, which they should be, firmly puts them in the MVP category, MVP discussion. So that's the kind of season I'm looking for for the Ravens offense. Now, listen, this is all projections, right? I know some of you guys will disagree. I'm crazy. These numbers are wild. Um, some guys may think these numbers are too low. I don't know. But listen, that's what I want you guys to do in the comments for me, man. Give me your stat predictions, right? Lamar Jackson, who's going to be the top running back? And who's going to be the top two pass catchers for the Ravens? Let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. But uh, I thought this was a fun little video to throw out there before, you know, we're a week out from the season, man. So might as well get some predictions in, right? All right, so I'm going to get out of here, man. Let me know what you guys think of the video. Uh, if you stay to this point of the video, consider hitting that subscribe button. But uh, it's Gabriel, Janelle Fan TV. I'm out.